The Owl House finale, Watching and Dreaming, did a lot of things right, delivering a satisfying conclusion to the show, and it did one thing almost better than anywhere else in their defeating of the main villain. The death of Emperor Bellows is an event which felt super satisfying, even though it ended in a way reminiscent of one of the most infamous cartoon villains. So what makes Emperor Bellows' death so satisfying? To answer that, we must go to the start. And when I mean the start, I mean chronologically. Caleb and Philip would have been. We don't know much of their story in Gradesfield besides that they were witch hunters who disappeared. Everything else, though, is hearsay. In the dis the disappearance of the Wittabane brothers did become a local legend, which says that Caleb fell in love with a witch and Philip frowned and Philip followed them to the Isles and then killed them. I think this is more or less what could have happened in the actual story, bar one main exception. Philip couldn't have killed Evelyn for reasons both narrative and thematic. If Bellos could overpower witches, then the Day of Unity plan is a lot more convoluted, and there's just no need for it if he can just kill witches by force. Secondly, it makes it a lot harder to, for Philip to justify his innocence in his head. A lot of the reason that Bellos could defend his actions is that witches bully him, so to speak, and he needed his revenge. Finally, if Philip did kill Evelyn, he would have the portal door, which he does not, and finding it becomes one of his main objectives. But what is almost certain is that Philip did kill his brother, Caleb. What Philip would begin to do is learn the glyphs of the Boiling Isles and use them to trap witches. Philip would isolate these witches and then overpower them with his glyphs and then glyph combos and steal their palisman. But there was one glyph which Bellows hadn't discovered. The light glyph. I find it so interesting that Bellows couldn't find the light glyph and the fact that it took him so long to discover the others. In Elsewhere and Else One, Philip says that it took about 10 years to discover the three glyphs. I, what I think it comes down to is the Titan's will. I don't mean the lies which Bellows was talking ever since we knew him, uh, but in Watching and Dreaming, we know that the Titan is conscious and was helping Luz along her journey in order to help King. So, that could also mean he was trying to stop Philip. But, even so, the fact that Philip couldn't discover the light glyph on his own is so interesting. Because, the glyph, the light glyph, is the most primitive of the four, and also the least destructive. Amity says that it is a spell which even a child could master, yet Bellos couldn't. I think the main reason why is because Bellos destroys everything. He corrupts. He literally does in the finale when he becomes turns into his monster self. Bellos would immediately begin misusing the light glyph once he got it, and that's what happened. Bellos turned the most peaceful glyph into a weapon because that's who he is. He only finds out about the light glyph because he abuses the trust put into him by Luz, a child. And Luz only trusts Philip because of the lies he told through his journal. While Philip was hit a lot in the aisles, he was already preparing his contingency plans. He wrote a journal full of lies just so he can try to use it in the future to gain people's trust or adoration, like what happened with Luz. It just shows how ahead Philip really is, even if it doesn't seem like it, and how manipulative he is even from the start. But let's fast forward a bit, and Bellows is now a master of magic. He has all the glyphs and the collector working for him. Bellows has figured out how to make a Grimwalker, and he's abused the heck out of them, as we see there are so many of them. In my recent One Last Scene video, I discussed how Bellos abuses Hunter, and what he thought of Hunter as a Grimwalker, and it's nothing more than a tool. This is what Bellos wants out of a brother, someone who can trust, but won't question anything. Of course, no real person is like that, especially if you're trying to do what Bellos wants to do. And yet, it is what Philip and later Bellos would demand of everyone around him. In June, I also made a video discussing the Owl House and their diversity, and I covered what makes Bellows such a good villain. Bellows claims to fight for humanity, yet he has the least human of all the characters. He killed his brother for falling in love, he killed the Grimwalkers for not being perfect, obedient servants, and he's plotting Day of Unity for his own ego to get the praise as the best witch hunter and destroy anything which might be more powerful than him. The Boy in the Niles is so diverse and inclusive in Bellos. This old white guy wants to destroy it. We must also mention, though, that Philip took up the mantle of Bellos in large part because of how hated he was in the Boiling Isles. But 
Now we begin to discover what we saw in the series where Bellowed is an avid manipulator. He has seized control of all of the Boiling Isles in less than 50 years just through his ability to lie. And lying really is what makes Bellows so powerful. While of course he's skilled in glyph magic, we hardly ever see him use it. And by the time the show begins, Bellows just needs to sit on a throne, give a few speeches every once in a while, and even what he does when he does use magic, so much of it comes from the Collector. Bellows is so good at manipulation that he is convincing people to sacrifice their power because he has hoodwinked them the world into thinking that he is this messiah type figure who fights for what the titan believes though as we covered he is doing the exact opposite of all of that not everyone loves bellows though the thing that keeps bellows's ship running so smoothly is that almost all of the bad things he does are kept secret by his power hungry lackeys in the emperor's covens or with the coven heads with his level of power bellows attracts the most power hungry people and with this manipulation, he turns them into his mindless guard dogs who have become fascists, chasing their promised life of luxury. But when Bellows can keep a secret, or when the people who follow him have a moral code, there are people who begin to become distrustful of him and what he does in the shadows, like Ida, Darius, and Rain. Again though, Bellows knows how to play people. About a month before the Day of Unity, when he begins talking about harsher measures to round up wild winches to convince the people of his good nature, he takes off his mask to show the world his scarred face, even though by taking off the mask, what he's really doing is hiding the truth. One relation I, I think we need to cover is Bellos and Lilith. Bellows has created such adoration of the people in the Isles that just the chance to join the Emperor's Coven caused Lilith to curse her sister, her best friend, just for the chance to serve Bellows and be one of the greats. Again, there is the fanaticism of Bellows' regime, which we see in the show. But the icing on the cake is that Ida wouldn't fight her sister. She stood down before the fight began so her sister would have the chance of her dreams. But Bellows creates such FOMO around the covens, where since everyone wants to be in a higher society, wants to be in the Evermer Coven, where they can do what they want, they have all the magic, it leads to tragedies like what happened to Ida. Of course, Lilith does want to help Ida, of course, and Bellows thinks, tells Lilith he can do it, but only if she captures Ida. Ida, who at the time is Bellows' greatest threat, since that's what she's getting Ida to do. Also, we need to remember Bellos knew Lilith would turn on him. It is an often overlooked element of Elsewhere and Elsewhere, but if Lilith went back in time with Luz, Bellos would know about Lilith teaming up with her sister. So, all of the manipulation we see that Bellos did, the FOMO causing Luz to curse Ida, forcing her to capture Ida, letting Luz get away in their fight, letting everyone escape in Young Blood Old Souls, even though they were at their weakest with lose getting out of the fight, Ida not being able to fight, and just everything like that, is to ensure that he got the light glyph and he met the collector. Again, Bellows plans so much to ensure he gets what he wants. He would sacrifice one of his greatest fighters, knowing that when it happened, she would lose a considerable amount of her powers by sharing the pain with her sister. We also need to mention the relationship between Bellows and Luz. What makes the relationship of these two characters so interesting is the fact they, that they stand in complete opposition to their views about the Boiling Isles. Before we continue on that though, I have one favor I'd like to ask all of you watching. I'm getting really close to monetization and that means soon I'll be able to improve my content even more. But if you could subscribe, it'll help me get past that finish line and it'll help me out a lot. Thank you to everyone who is watching and subscribed, but now let's keep going. Like we've covered, Bellos wants to destroy everything that he can't control, which is the Isles where everyone can be themselves. Luz, on the other hand, sees the Isles as an escape from the pressures of the real world where she can be free. So while they are both human, they could never work together, they could never team up because their goals are opposites, and this also introduces the idea of humanity in the Isles. Like mentioned before, Bellos fights for humanity, yet the people of the Isles are so much more human. They show empathy, kindness, acceptance. Where Luz enters the Isles, there are so many bad people like Amity, Basha, and Tibbles, and many others, but 
All of that stems from Bellows in his manipulation because in the past when we went there and elsewhere and elsewhere, we saw a society at peace. Bellows, even without Day of Unity, was corrupting the world while Luz was trying to save it. Bellows corrupted Odalia, but Luz saved Amity. Bellows turned the Clawthorn sisters against each other, and Luz reunited them. This is why Bellows can't be justified. A character like Thanos, who had good intentions but goes about them in a negative way, just isn't comparable to Bellows, who wants to destroy everything he can't control. So, back to the question I posed at the start. What makes Bellows' death so satisfying? First of all, he has interesting relationships with so many of our characters, and we clearly understand why he is the villain. He is egocentric, and will destroy or manipulate anyone to achieve what he wants. And finally, Bellos' death is earned. In Watching and Dreaming, we fully understand that the Collector is just as much a victim as Luz, Lilith, Ida from Bellos, and that means that he is the main villain without a doubt. He went so far to try and kill a child to achieve what he wants. But Bellos' rule is unnatural. He tried to control the Isles, literally a living, breathing world. And when the tables are turned against him, he is undefendable. He can't talk his way out of this situation because it's impossible to defend him. So as he melts away, it is satisfying and ironic because one of Pop's culture's most famous witches also melts in water, adding another layer to show us that Bellos is the real witch, the real villain who won't always wanted to destroy everything. Anyways, that's it for me today. If you enjoyed this video, I bet you'll enjoy my recent breakdown of the character Hunter in my One Last Scene video. That video finishes off my analysis on Bellos. I complete a lot more of what I discuss here, so make sure to check that out. Anyways, thank you all for watching. I have been Fictional Fanatics. I will see you in that Hunter video, but until then, bye.